Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca Palmick and the statistical analysis focuses on injury and fatality in the agricultural industry. To begin, I would like to give you a few learning objectives. These objectives are understand the risks and hazardous situations created by the agricultural industry, identify factors that contribute to agriculture being one of the most hazardous industries, analyze collected data using quantitative methods, and synthesize the results to point out strategies of reducing hazardous situations, injuries, and fatalities. There are many categories and subcategories of the hazards that can contribute to injuries, illnesses, and fatalities in the agricultural industry. The major hazards this presentation will focus on are motorized vehicles, large machinery, falls and slips, injuries due to animals, and interaction with harmful substances. So this is just a bit of background on the agricultural industry and its scope in the United States. As of 2014, the Bureau of Labor Statistics estimated that the agricultural industry employs 2 to 4 million people and also has the highest share of self-employed persons in any industry. It has been shown that agriculture is among the most hazardous industries, especially for the self-employed. In addition, agriculture tends to employ proportionately more workers aged 16 to 19 and age 55 and older than any other industry. This is interesting because age can contribute to certain hazards being even more likely to result in injury due to physical limitations having to do with either very young or old age. Finally, motor vehicles and large machinery are the leading cause of death in agriculture, forestry, and fishing. Vehicular industries and fatalities in this industry occur most often with regards to tractors, but this category can be difficult to define due to the fact that these incidents can occur both off and on roadways. There is also a great deal of current literature on the topic of injuries and fatalities in agriculture with relation to children. Children represent a unique issue in agriculture due to its nature of being both a place of business and also a home. Children very often contribute to farms in the form of chores, which are not regulated and can be extremely dangerous. Injuries and fatalities in children are also not often reported by major organizations because they are difficult to define. I thought this was an important distinction that sets agriculture apart from other industries. Childhood farm injuries tend to be more fatal more quickly than injuries in adults and also tend to be more costly. The NORA sector relevant to this study, agriculture, forestry, and fishing. The cross sectors I thought to be most relevant were traumatic injury and the cause of fatalities, surveillance and reporting of injuries, since farm workers often work alone and seasonally, which affects how the incidents are reported, and emergency preparedness and response, which is an issue due to the remote nature of many farm workplaces and also relates to childhood injuries. The hypothesis of this study will relate mainly to agricultural fatalities. The alternative hypothesis chosen was that the number of fatalities in the agricultural industry has seen statistically significant changes over the past 10 years as a result of technological advances, stricter regulations, and better reporting. The null hypothesis is that there has been no statistically significant change in the number of fatalities in the agricultural industry over the time period of 2005 until 2014. The data of interest that was collected mainly from the Bureau of Labor Statistics was the number of total fatalities in the agricultural industry for the years of 2005 to 2014. These fatalities were organized and analyzed by age range, 
from under 16 to over 65, employment status of self-employed or wage and salary workers, ethnicity, including white, non-Hispanic, black, non-Hispanic, and Hispanic individuals, and event or exposure. The events and exposures chosen were violence and other injuries by persons or animals, transportation incidents, falls, trips, and slips, contact with objects and equipment, tractors, and exposure to harmful substances or environments. It is important to note that some of these categories may overlap or contain other subcategories. The first set of data analyzed was the total number of fatalities for each year from 2005 to 2014. The data shown in this graph appears to indicate that, that, that there was an overall decrease in the number of agricultural fatalities from 2005 to 2014. However, there are fluctuations throughout as this chart shows. Next, fatalities by age were analyzed. This chart shows the fatalities in agriculture broken down by age range from data collected in 2014. As you can see, the number of fatalities sharply increases from the lowest age range to the highest, with the highest number of fatalities being seen in the age group of persons over 65 years of age. This chart shows the number of fatalities in agriculture with relation to employment status of affected individuals. The two categories of employment were self-employed individuals and wage and salary workers. Agriculture has a higher proportion of self-employed individuals than any other industry, and also this chart shows that the number of fatalities is higher among self-employed agricultural workers than wage and salary agricultural workers. This makes sense given the fact that there are more self-employed workers to begin with. The overall trend seen again appears to be a decrease but with fluctuations throughout the 10 year period. Data concerning fatalities by ethnicity in agriculture was also analyzed. This chart shows the number of fatalities in three ethnic groups white, non-Hispanic, black, non-Hispanic, and Hispanic for each of the years for the 10-year period studied. As seen here, the number of fatalities is much higher among white non-Hispanics than either of the other two groups, and the number of fatalities among Hispanics is higher than among black non-Hispanics, but both are still much lower than the white non-Hispanic group. This table shows the number of fatalities in each year for each event or exposure selected. As shown here, the categories of transportation incidents, contact with objects and equipment, and tractors show the largest numbers of fatalities in every year studied. The number of fatalities appears to decrease in some categories, but increase in others. This is most likely due to regulations and technological advancement that relates to some equipment and not others. The methods of data analysis used for this study are outlined here. First, the distribution of data for the fatality data will be determined. The mean, standard deviation, and variance will also be determined using methods based on whether the data is normally or log normally distributed. Incidence and risk will also be calculated along with the total recordable case weight. Linear regression statistics will be used to determine the statistical significance of the data and determine whether the null hypothesis will be accepted or rejected. Wom's plotting method showed that there was a linear trend when the data was plotted on normal probability paper. 
Normal distribution was also shown by the percentage of the data that fell within one, two, or three standard deviations of the mean. The data for all fatalities in the agricultural industry from 2005 to 2014, it was shown that about 68% of the data points fell within one standard deviation of the mean, and more than 95% of the data points fell within two standard deviations of the mean. This chart shows the incidence rates of non-fatal occupational injuries for the time period of 2005 to 2014. As you can see, the incidence rate of non-fatal injuries in the agricultural industry was higher than the incidence rate of injury in all other, other industries for each year studied. This chart shows the relative risk of non-fatal occupational injuries in the agricultural industry from 2005 to 2014, which was calculated based on the incidence rates in agriculture compared to all other combined industries. The relative risk of non-fatal occupational injuries appears to overall increase from 2005 to 2014 based on this chart, though the increase seen is small. This table shows the total number of recordable cases resulting from injury or illness in agriculture. The total number of recordable cases appears to fluctuate from 2005 to 2014. It also shows the number of cases with days away from work, transferred, or restrictions, which are a subset of the total recordable cases and are therefore lower overall than the total recordable cases. The total number of cases with days away from work, transferred, or restriction shows a similar pattern, first appearing to decrease, then increase again, and end up around the same level. Regression statistics were used to determine the statistical significance of the data analyzed. The data used for this calculation was the total number of fatalities in the agricultural industry organized by year. The resulting p-value was 0 0.003, which is below the 95% confidence interval, which would show a p-value of 0 0.05. This indicates that there is a statistically significant relationship between the variables observed. Therefore, the original null hypothesis that there has been no statistically significant change in the number of fatalities in the agricultural industry from 2005 to 2014 can be rejected. The results of this study are as follows. The total number of fatalities due to injuries and illnesses in the agricultural sector appears to decrease from 2005 to 2014. Also, agriculture continues to make up a large percentage of fatalities in all industries throughout this time period. The number of fatalities for the age group of 65 and older is much higher than any other age group. Low numbers reported in younger age groups could be partially due to underreporting in children. Self-employed workers consistently saw more fatalities than wage and salary workers. The majority of fatalities were among white non-Hispanic workers compared to black non-Hispanic and Hispanic workers. Transportation and contact with machinery and equipment were the largest causes of fatalities in the agricultural industry from 2005 to 2014. Again, the p 
p-value of 0.003 caused the null hypothesis to be rejected and indicates that there is a statistically significant relationship between the variables analyzed. To elaborate, this indicates that any changes seen in the number of fatalities in agriculture over the time period of 2005 to 2014 are statistically significant and non-random. The most likely causes of the decreases in fatalities in agriculture are technological advancements in equipment and updates in reporting methods. Agriculture continues to be one of the most hazardous professions due to some key components that differ from most other industries. For one, there are many more self-employed individuals in the agricultural industry than most other industries for which data is collected. In addition, agriculture is seasonal in nature, which leads to challenges in how fatalities and injuries are reported and compared to other industries that are year-round. Oftentimes, jobs in this industry tend to leave workers in a solitary environment, which is a major factor contributing to how many injuries become fatal that may not have been if the injured individual received medical attention sooner. The fact that many farms serve a dual purpose as both workplaces and places of residence also affects how injuries and fatalities are categorized, reported, and compared, since these incidents could be related to farm equipment but occur during leisure time and therefore are not included or are included differently when recorded. <clears throat> Finally, Children are more involved in the agricultural industry than any other industry, but injuries and fatalities among children are not recorded in the same way or by the same organizations as fatalities and injuries among adult workers. In addition, children who work on farms are not protected by child labor laws. Updates in machinery and motor vehicles could help reduce injuries and fatalities in agriculture, but these updates can be expensive and it is difficult for agricultural workers to decide to upgrade a piece of equipment if it is still functional, even though it may be more dangerous. Some recommendations to further assist the number of fatalities decreasing in the future could include reassessing how farms are defined when fatalities and injuries are reported to gain a better understanding of what can be done to prevent these injuries and illnesses. Updating equipment, including simple protective equipment such as seatbelts on tractors and other motorized equipment, better surveillance to improve response time for injured individuals, and more studies into how children are involved in agriculture to better include them in data collection in the future. This concludes my presentation on fatalities and injuries in the agricultural industry. Here are some references, and thank you for listening.